Right, here's a 2014 Audi Q5. We are going to be replacing the injectors. So I'm going to kind of do this in steps and I'll give you guys basically a TLDR. Make this a, a quick video as much as I can. Here's what it looks like when it's together. So if you want to just kind of use it as reference, how everything's run and set up. What's going to be coming off is we're going to be disconnecting these hoses, wires, wires, connectors, these. Uh, you can take this joint loose here and this will all just kind of come off together. Uh, unbolt some things, unbolt some other things, and uh, I'll show you what one next step. A quick tip on something, you have to get these kind of things off. I use a pick tool to, to unlock these. Sometimes I'll go down through this way and pull it to the side or I'll go through the front if that's the case but that's how I'll get off like several of these little pieces it's really hard to see but you just gotta make sure you don't stab yourself or something else it, it can get a little dicey so you basically do that you pop one loose and then you keep tension on it pulling it I'm trying to do it one-handed so but like that's how I got this off and this one's a little stiff so you're gonna have to get it and just kind of pull firmly but not too hard because you don't want to break that or the whole hose, but it's it's rather flexible, so don't get too panicky. You shouldn't snap it in half unless it's too old. This is one of those moments where that a lot of you should be aware of. This is a right angle pick tool. I just have it kind of jammed in between that, and so I use this to break the seal, and so I work it back and forth, and then you also pull out at the same time, and so you can eventually get that out. I pulled it off here because somebody already moved this clamp, and uh, okay, I'll just take this spot doesn't really matter where you disconnect it from just disconnect one of them uh, the other thing I wanted to let you know about are these clips these clips have these safety locks that they got to pull back that's unlocked and then you push down and open regular more safety lock style sometimes these can be a bit of a pain you might need a pick tool or something to help open them and then you just unplug them now for the bigger ones like this these, they have a clip right there at the front. There's no safety pin though, so these I just lift by going in from the front here, and you'll you'll hear it when you get it. It'll go click often, but once you get it scoot back just a little bit, then it comes off the rest of the way pretty easy. And so it works for several other connectors like that. And these down here are the ones that you really want to get like that. They are just kind of irritating the reach. But off with this. I'll show you where we're at right now. Throttle body's off. Four T30s, here's where they're all located, just like this. So you can use that as reference. The orientation of this is pretty obvious. Then these three bolts and this bolt, they're involved with holding this on, as well as these are these two holding it on. They're all the same size. So, again, throttle. First thing you gotta get off is this. Get the throttle body out of the way, and then it makes it easier to get these ho hoses out of there. There's a, that's what that little yellow piece was that had the connectors. Throttle body here. Um, this is where the secondary hose was this hose I got that off already as you can see here it fits like this and it just it literally you can get it out by just turning it and it will fit through through here because it goes under there like that but it wiggles out you don't have to take anything else additional off so now we're gonna get off these fuel rails and I'm gonna get off some more wiring but yeah basically it's just gonna be a lot of these bolts because this is a two-piece intake so this is the upper intake there's a lower part that's got the injectors in it which is this black part right here so it's going to be two separate pieces and uh you're going to have gaskets for all that and i'll show you those in a minute let's see if we can do this one-handed so i got the two bolts of the fuel rail or the fuel rail disconnected on both ends so now oh my god this is there we go t30 Add this to my pile of stuff in the order that it came out and then we should have this rail loose so we got it down there and we got it so there's a seven there's 17 millimeters ones down here yep there's one of them the other one is back here yep there's the other one. so now it's just a matter of See if I can't wiggle this out one-handed. The answer is yes, it does come out because I pulled them off before. I just gotta see what I gotta do to wiggle this one out. It might just be leave it in here loose, get this loose, and then when I start pulling out the intake, just fishing it out from behind it because it seems like, yeah, we're kind of stuck on these 
rails slightly these right here these don't come off the intake they stay connected so you don't have to worry about these things it might i might bust that bolt loose and maybe maybe they'll bend a little bit just like a little flexibility i'm not gonna bend bend anyway let me see what i can do to get this out and we'll get on to the next thing comes out promise you see it's not there this is still connected didn't have to bend anything i just had to push these hoses a little bit to get it you basically pull this end of it towards you and then it'll kind of walk it out like this and then you can rotate it and walk it out more and then get it out so it's not it's not complicated you just fiddle with it for a few minutes you'll you'll see what's going on all right let's get out all these t30s and uh there's two 10 millimeters right there and one on the other end so we'll get all that out and then we'll should get this off because we've already disconnected like this line we've unplugged here we have made sure pretty much ever there's a little vacuum hose right here that plugs into this there's a nipple right there and so we just disconnect that there's also a plug at the bottom of this there's a plug right here that you can't even see you can't see it anyway it's right there so now it's disconnected and the last thing I got to be aware of is, oh, oil filter. This is the thing I brought this for. I dropped this for, dropped it twice for. This is what you really wanna to use to get this off without damaging it, because I will reuse this filter. A lot of people are gonna yell at me right now about that because you can't reuse a filter. I don't, I've done it literally hundreds of times at this point. However, I am going to require two hands to do this because of just how tight it is in here. And this thing being a little bent. Wait, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use two hands. Anyway, I'll get the filter off. And we'll start working on the intake. This one is for you guys who are a little bit panicky or paranoid like I am. These do crack and they make funny noises when you break them loose. Don't worry about it. It's just normal. It's a normal sound. You're not breaking anything. I know if I was doing this for the first time and I never done it before, this would probably make me panic. But nah, it's it's just a normal noise. So I'm just cracking them all loose, then I'll come back through with my electric ratchet and whiz them all out. But I like to break them loose by hand because then I know, you know, roughly how tight it is when I'm putting them back together. And also, I can tell if I'm gonna break them. Last thing I want to do is friggin' try and get this off. Ooh. There we go. Like I said, it can be a little unnerving sometimes, but don't worry, just try not to strip them. Also get a high quality T30. That's what these are, T30. I, I'll have a collection of tools that I've, I've just been kind of stacking them all up as I use them. Um, also when you get the filter off, just crack it loose, loosen it up some and let it drain. If it's, the engine should be cold, but if it's not, just let it drain for a few minutes and then you can make a mess. And by make a mess, I mean, not make a mess. Let's put that right there so it doesn't fall over. But yeah, we'll, we'll reuse that and it'll be just fine. So let's get all these bolts out. I just got them all cracked loose. And uh, on we go. This is gonna be the part that might get some of you. This is a 13 millimeter. It goes up into the intake. This goes to the block and it's a triple square. It's a triple square 10. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. Anyway, so it goes from. Let's try not to blast you out. So it goes from there. That's where the 13 is. It's on that stud, and then down here, where you can see that bolt hole that my flashlight's touching the tip of, that's where the bottom part of it goes. So you just need an extension. But the triple square, the, the actual socket, that was the one that's unique. So it's basically a 12-point Torx is one way but it's also known as a triple square because a square has four sides and three of them is 12. yay <clears throat> so anyway now like i said those don't need to come off at all this should stay here but of course it won't wiggle off there you go now we have the first part of the intake off this is the most i'd say the most difficult part I'm just going to set that there. But yeah, this is connected to an injector. There's an injector there. you got to make sure to unplug it. This is like a cold start injector. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I haven't never messed with it before, other than taking them off and putting them back on. So now, we can get the rest of this off, because this is the lower intake and this is the fuel rail. So the injectors are held in by this, right there. So this is your high pressure fuel pressure sensor. There's where your high pressure fuel line 
goes into from over there, over that way. And uh, then you just got like your injector harness, things like that. These are the, this is the connector for your injectors. And then some other, uh, don't forget this plug. I forgot this one on the motor I did and I almost didn't get it back in. You can plug it in with it in the car like this, but I don't recommend it. I would, I would try to do it without that first. All right, so pretty sure this whole, this whole shebang comes out and it's kind of a pain. So let me get this one re-remembered. I know I gotta take this off here and it's kind of a combination of you gotta pop this off and roll this forward a little bit. So let me, let me re-remember it and then I'll explain it again. All right, the hardest thing for this part was getting this little punk off. I had to loosen these bolts. I'm loosening this one, this one, and there's one more down there. You don't necessarily have to do it, but I gave it just a little bit more play. And by a little bit, I mean barely any. Um, once you get this thing to pop loose, you can turn it. it. It turns in there, so you can just turn it so that way it's not jammed up against there. Once you do that, it's just a matter of firmly yet gently pulling back, and it will kind of slide out over the uh, over the in injector rail because it kind of sits on it, if you can see. Make sure I'm clear. But my hand's in the way. You can kind of see how it sits on the injector rail, so it, it just kind of slides over it. But yeah, you totally get it out. Didn't have to loosen anything there yet. So now we're gonna, now's the easy part. We pull out the injectors and put in the new ones. Got the fuel rail out. You're gonna have to, I, I used a rag and stuffed a rag and so that way I could hold my thumb here and pull on, just firmly pull on the rail because it's very stuck. And uh, you'll wanna get these injectors out and they'll be stuck too. This one came out with the rail, all these three didn't. And so I got all these out with just my hands. And what you do to get them out with your hands is you just kind of wiggle it back and forth while pulling slightly in that direction and they should work their way out if you have to there are kits for it you can get them for a couple or 25 50 bucks off amazon it'll be an injector kit where it comes with a tiny little slide hammer that you can take this o-ring off and put it behind there and knock it out it's if you really need it, or if you're replacing them just get vice grips grab them and get them out whatever way you can but if you're reusing them, obviously don't damage them. And once you get them all loose, you will find out that the harness also goes with it, but you can if you want to. I might just unplug them, but yeah. So you can, the harness is, the only thing that's plugged in right now is the, the temp sensor for the coolant. I just can't get it one-handed right now. But everything else is unplugged and it's all loose. So we'll get this out. I got the fuel rail sitting over here. And you'll just need to change out any things you need to change out, like get these O-rings out of here. That one doesn't have it in it. That one's okay. And uh, then go back together. All right, now we're going to go over what you need to put it back together. So this is your new injector out of the box. Um, this is our part number list. This is the injector part number for the Bosch injector, 309374. And then you got more intake manifold gaskets. You got the uppers and the lowers. I don't know which one's which. One of the two, uh, it would be these are the uppers because they're the four. The lower one is a really big one. So these are one, two, three, four. So it's four of these and then one of this big orange one. So you're going to get them like this. And what you're going to need to do is this goes over the back as such. Doing this, of course, one-handed because I haven't brought any of my tripod stuff back here. So I need to do that. Um, so that goes around there like such. And then this one, you getting these off is very delicate. These are basically, I don't know why they're here per se. I know it has something to do with keeping it from vibrating and moving around, but they're kind of ridiculous. Anyway, they're super delicate. So you'll just put this right over the tip of the whole injector. Let's just see if we can't get it in there. Like, there we go. And so it'll easily slide over the, the gasket there and then it, should just click on and then it should hold on and that's what you want to do if one of these breaks you might have to get a new set but I've finished I have some of these stored from previous jobs where I've thrown away engines and so I save these because I know they break all the time and I save some of these because they just get lost so and then what I do from here is I get just the smallest smallest just dab kind of wipe my finger on the dielectric grease because that's just uh, I forget what brand, but it's just dielectric grease. And so I just put a little bit on the O-ring. makes it much, much, much easier to slide in. So that way you can just 
pop it on there and push it in. So I'm gonna do that with two hands because I want to grab it from there. But yeah, it, I already did this one. It's not super difficult. I hope you uh, have success. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I had some food. Now I got them all back installed in the rail. I was gonna show you the injector kit that we have. This is, I think it's like 30 or 50 bucks off Amazon. Um, it's called that. Use that for what you will. Um, here's the little slide hammer. And what it does is it's got this little hook at the end. You can slide that over the injector and then knock it on out. And then you use these to form the uh, Teflon O-ring, this little thing right there. You use these to open it and spread it open so that way it actually gets over. And then you use these to basically compress it. So I hope that helps. I also kind of wanted to let you know a little thing here. I noticed that somebody's been in here because we're missing a bolt right there that holds this pipe on. So I'm probably going to try and find something sticking there. Uh, this clip was broke when I, that was, when I was trying to get it off. I noticed that that fell apart. The rest of them were intact. But yeah, somebody's been in here and has, has pulled some things off and broken a few plastic things, but nothing, nothing important. It's just, I can just tell somebody's been here. So back together we go. Where it comes to pushing these back in, let's just go ahead and do it right now. So it's gonna go like this because we got the high pressure rail and then delicately and gently try to line up all of the holes. There we go. They all got in. And so then I pretty much just take it and start trying to push it in firmly yet not too hard. So. This is going to require two hands, a little, probably a little wiggling just to get it to move in there, but it should fit flush and then we'll put the bolts in to pull it the rest of the way down. All right, so I got it about this far in, it's kind of hard to tell, but now I'm going to use the bolts to just pull it that little bit further down. It's real easy. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, I'm not tightening the bolts a ton. Go a few turns on each side, then just kind of go back and forth so that way you press them in evenly and you kind of feel it move around in there as they get closer and also these will slide into their slots but yeah I just I just pretty much pushed it pretty hard and now we got them bottomed out now I'll get the torque wrench and we'll torque them down uh, pretty sure all these are torqued to nine uh, double check me on that I'm gonna double check myself, but uh, look up the torque spec because it can vary from engine to engine, so make sure you got the, your engine, etc. Otherwise, from this point on, it's pretty much just reverse. Put everything back together the way you took it off. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm not gonna forget this plug. This is the rail, the, the flat plug for the intake, and that's one of those irritating ones that's hard to get back on if, you're, if you don't do it early enough. But other than that, that's about it where it comes to advice putting it back together. So if you've gotten this far and uh, you've gotten those injectors back in, then you're good to go. Finish it up and take it on a test drive. Hope you have just as much success as uh, I hope to have. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is going to be a little jarring because I'm going to shove this right in towards the end. I was getting this back on and I wanted to give you a couple quick tips. This is just irritating to deal with. This Having this loose helped out more in the going back in than it did coming off. But you're just going to have to kind of scarily push down and fight that on there and also you got to get it around this because you have to have these two posts through these holes and when you put them in here it doesn't want to go over the rail so to be fair these do flex so that's how you get them over these flex just a little just enough that you can you know get it over there without breaking anything nothing is broke nothing is bent it all just, it's just really tight together. So you just gotta keep that in mind. Um, you're gonna you are gonna be a little nervous when you're pushing so hard on some of these things. You're gonna be like, is it gonna break or is it, gonna go to, is it going to go on? And the uh, answer is hopefully. Last, last, last thing. Keep in mind, you are working right around the alternator. This is the alternator. And as you can see, where you're working is right there. Let's this out a little bit. There. Um, so, this is your alternator wire right here, behind this wire, and not being blinded by that flashlight. That's your alternator wire. 
So that is hot. That is, battery's plugged in, that is hot. So don't touch it with uh, wrenches or anything touching ground. If you're doing this and you're not comfortable, unplug the battery, you'll be fine with that. But uh, I, I'm fine with it being plugged in. So I just am very mindful that this is, this is hot. You can touch it with your finger, just don't touch it with a wrench.